And we are back on the Zero Hour. Our next guest is one of our best uh, young up-and-coming economists. He has studied many of the issues that are so salient to the political and economic situation today. And he has a new book out. Gabriel Zuckman's new book is entitled The Hidden Wealth of Nations, The Scourge of Tax Havens. And he joins us now. Gabriel, Professor Zuckman, thanks for joining us. Having me. Uh, now, listen, I, I would say that you uh, you tip your hand a bit in your conclusion about offshore tax havens with your subtitle there, uh, yes. the, the Scourge of Tax Havens. Uh, why are tax havens, which people think of as a, a way to stash your cash offshore, why are they a problem? Well, you know, every country has the right to choose its own forms of taxation, uh, to have low tax rates if it wants to. But what tax havens do is not this, is that they steal the tax revenue of other countries. They make it easy for tax dodgers to evade their own tax obligations, uh, for instance, because they, ha they cooperate very little with foreign tax authorities uh, or because they enable multinational companies to artificially shift a huge amount of their profits uh, in Bermuda or places, or places like that, or because they make it easy for money launderers to uh, hide their assets and to conceal uh, wealth. And so that's the problem. You know, in economics uh, term, it's externality. You know, it's like pollution. Uh, these are countries that uh, steal the tax revenue of their neighbors, basically. So in a sense, uh, a tax haven becomes a kind of opportunistic creature that that lives off the uh, what should be the tax earnings of uh, of other nations um, and so in the book uh, the hidden wealth of nations uh, you uh, first of all tell us why you got in uh, into studying this problem because I think this is interesting I think it's a, it's a very important topic but what brought you to studying tax havens a couple of things one is that I'm uh, interested in inequality and the way that we measure inequality in economics is by looking mostly at tax data, tax returns data and survey data. But of course when you look at tax data you only capture the income or the wealth that people report and not the income that they don't report, not the income that evades taxes. So I wanted to have a sense of how much are we missing how much are we underestimating inequality when we use tax data? And so I started looking at, okay, can we have a sense of uh, the amount of wealth that is in tax havens globally? So that's one thing. The other thing is that I started this research. This is really my PhD dissertation. I started my PhD in 2009 during the global financial crisis, and I wanted to understand what was going on. So I... I uh, started looking at the international macroeconomic statistics. And when you do that, you're immediately struck by the fact that there are hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars that flow in and out of places like the Cayman Islands on Bermuda and so on. And, you know, everybody kind of knows that it exists, but it's very striking when you see it in the published data uh, that are used, you know, to monitor financial stability and so on. And so I wanted to understand, okay, what is this corresponding to? What is legal? What is illegal? What are the government revenue laws involved? Is this a factor of financial instability and so on? Yeah, we're talking with Professor Gabriel Zuckman, author of the new book, uh, The Hidden Wealth of Nations, The Scourge of Tax Havens. And, you know, one of the things that really struck me in looking at this was uh, the magnitude of uh, the wealth that is stored in offshore tax havens has started to feel a little bit like dark matter, you know, distorting the the uh, the, the physical universe. It just it, it, we don't see it, but there's a lot there, according to the New York Times interpretation anyway of your book. Uh, well, you yourself wrote that the rich world's indebtedness is, and I quote, you know, an illusion caused by tax havens. And and the Times goes on to say if offshore assets, assets were properly measured, Europe would be a net creditor, not a debtor, and that American indebtedness would fall from 18 percent of the gross domestic product to 9 percent. So we must be dealing with a large mass of wealth that is hidden 
uh, from both taxation and in many cases from view, aren't we? That is true, yes. So by my estimate, there's about $7.6 trillion today which are held by rich individuals uh, in offshore bank accounts all over the world. And to fix ideas, $7.6 trillion, that's the equivalent of 8% of the world's of the world's total household financial wealth. So it's 8% of financial wealth, which is in tax havens globally, and that's a global average, right? So for some countries, for some economies, it's much more than 8%. Uh, for uh, Latin America, for instance, it's more than 20% of their financial wealth, which is in tax havens. For Africa, maybe 30%. For Russia, up to 50%. So for developing countries in general, a huge fraction of the financial wealth of these countries is placed in Switzerland, Cayman Islands, and so on. And so the implications both for you know the, the development of these countries uh, and for the study of inequality are, are very important. Yeah, and I, I'm looking at those figures now. I'm looking at your table. We're talking with uh, Gabriel Zuckman, economist, about his book, The Hidden Wealth of Nations, The Scourge of Tax Havens. And uh, I'm seeing those very large numbers uh, for the third world, but also seeing 4% of uh, financial wealth in the United States held offshore. Uh, it looks like if uh, $1.2 trillion, certainly uh, you're suggesting a tax revenue loss I assume this is on an annual basis of $36 billion. Correct. Yes. So for the U.S., you know, 4% of the U.S. financial wealth offshore, this is maybe a bit less than the global average. But I think, on the other hand, the U.S. Uh, is very uh, um, exposed to and, and, and uh, affected by the huge uh, shifting of corporate profits. So we're not talking uh, individual wealth anymore, but we're talking about the profits of multinational firms like Google or Amazon. And, and these firms shift a huge fraction of profits to uh, tax havens, zero tax countries like Bermuda, Cayman Islands, and so on. And, and this for the US is a very, a very significant problem. And the revenue, the government revenue losses involved are, uh, are, are very substantial. So, and we're talking with the e economist Gabriel Zuckman here on the Zero Hour. So a couple thoughts. One is, of course, if, if we are hiding on the personal level or household level 4% of, of financial wealth, uh, since that is concentrated at the top, we're, if anything, probably underestimating the magnitude of inequality in this country. Is that a fair statement? Well, you know, there, there are many uncertainties on how wealth is distributed in the U.S. Uh, right now for the simple reason that the, the available data on wealth is quite limited. There's no wealth tax. There's an income tax, so you can have a sense of how income is distributed, but no, there's no wealth tax. There are registers of um, land and real estate that can be used to, to uh, measure non-financial wealth, but there are no registers of financial assets. So the, just the statistical information that's available today to uh, know how wealth is distributed in the U.S. is very limited. However, what we know, you know, the best estimate that we have is that about uh, the top 0.1% of the wealth distribution in the U.S., owns about 22% of total U.S. wealth today, and it used to own about 7% of total U.S. wealth in the late 1970s. Now, if you take into account tax havens, uh, both the level and the increase in the, in the very top wealth shares, you know, would be even bigger, maybe rather than 22%, you know, the top 0.1% wealth, wealth share would be 23% or 24%. But the point is that wealth is already so enormously concentrated in the U.S. that, um, of course, even after, after taking into account tax havens is going to be even more concentrated, but, you know, it is even disregarding tax havens very unequally distributed today. And, and oh, oh, okay. Well, thank you for that. And we're talking with uh, economist Gabriel Zuckman. But okay, now let's talk about corporations, since you've mentioned them. One of one of your 
uh, chart shows that the effective rate paid by U.S. corporations has been reduced by one third since the late uh, 1990s, which is a very short time frame. And uh, to what extent do, do tax havens or offshoring of tax revenue in general play into that uh, steep reduction? Uh, basically, they play the, the main role, you know, the main reason why the effective corporate income tax rate has declined so much in the U.S. is because of tax havens. So just to, to fix ideas, uh, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, the effective corporate income tax rate in the U.S. was about 30 percent, uh, so a bit below the federal statutory rate of 35 uh, percent. Today, the, the federal statutory rate has remained the same. It's still 35 percent, but the effective rate paid by corporations in the U.S. has declined to 20 percent. So that's indeed a decline by one third, as you, as you said. Uh, you know, the bulk of this decline, maybe six or seven percentage points out of the 10 percentage points decline, owes to the growing uh, shifting of profits by U.S. firms to uh, zero-tax countries like Bermuda, so the growing artificial profit shifting. There's one simple way to see this. You know, ask U.S. firms what fraction, uh, ask them about where they make profits. Ask them to, to uh, disclose the geographical location of their profits. And what you see in the aggregate data is that 55% of all the foreign profits of U.S. firms are uh, made, apparently, according to these companies, in a handful of tax havens like Bermuda, uh, like the Cayman Islands, uh, Switzerland, Ireland, Singapore, and so on, where the effective tax rate uh, paid by U.S. firms is about two to three percent. You have okay. Apple, Apple, which you mentioned, I believe, uh, Apple Corporation uh, is nominally, despite what everybody knows about its history, uh, an Irish company. So uh, I, I think that speaks well to your point. Um, so Gabriel Zuckman, what is the solution? Uh, to this uh, this problem of of hidden wealth of tax evasion, how do we fix this? Well, there are a number of things that could be done. So, first of all, I would like to say that there's been a lot of progress actually uh, over the recent years in better fighting offshore tax evasion by by rich individuals, so personal tax evasion. Uh, that is known as the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act in the U.S. So there's an automatic exchange of bank information between uh, tax haven uh, financial institutions and the IRS. This is starting now. So this is a big progress, right? Because 10 years ago, you would ask, you know, any tax expert about whether this is, this is doable, whether one day there would be an automatic exchange of bank information and all of them would have told you, oh, no, this will never happen. This is utopian and so on. But now this is becoming reality. Uh, so that's that's a progress. And that shows that, you know, significant reforms and, and things can can happen in, you know, forms of international cooperation that, that many economists would deem utopian can materialize even in a relatively short period of time. So that, that gives hope and that shows that, that the fight against tax, tax havens can be actually won. However, at the same time, um, uh, much, uh, much, much more should be done to really put an end to this problem. Um, I would say that the main uh, thing, in my view, would be to create um, a, a register or registries for financial assets just in the same way as we have registers of real estate and land, and, we, and we've had these registers for a very long time, and we have them in many countries, uh, but they only capture the ownership of, of houses and, and land, and nothing about who owns equities and bonds and mutual fund shares and the like. Um, so that would be the main, uh, the main thing. And what's important to understand is that... Um, 
financial registers you know already exist today in each country but they are managed and uh, uh, only used by private financial institutions so in the US that would be the depository trust corporation in Europe companies known as Clearstream and Euroclear these are private companies that basically keep the book of who owns uh, equities, bonds, mutual fund shares. This information is only used for, you know, security settlement. It's not used for enforcing taxes. It's not used for statistical purposes. It's not used to uh, fight money laundering or the financing of terrorism. And what I think would be doable and important uh, is to actually transfer the ownership of this data to public authorities and to use this vast amount of information for the public good, not only for, you know, securities market, the well-functioning of these markets, which is important, but also for public goods like uh, transparency, s compiling good statistics on, on the distribution of wealth, uh, monitoring financial stability, and fighting tax evasion. And this intersects nicely, if, if I'm recalling correctly, with Thomas Piketty's suggestions for the overall tracking of global wealth as well. Does it not? It does. Piketty's, Piketty's proposal is to, to you know, have uh, wealth taxes and you know, maybe ultimately an ideally global wealth tax. The idea being that you know, taxes are always more than taxes. They create information. A wealth tax would create a lot of information on, uh, you know, the distribution of wealth such that we can have an informed debate about whether there's too much inequality and, and how uh, tax policy might affect that. Uh, I think it's, it's the two proposals are very complementary. You know, you, you, it, it's hard to, to have a wealth tax uh, if you can't measure wealth in the first place, if you don't right. have a recording system, you know, we have property taxes, for instance, but the way that they work is, is because we have, you know, we have registers that, that tell us here's all the real estate that exists in the country or, you know, in, in, in municipality and so on. And, and to make a, a wealth tax work, we need to have some information. on Right. And I would have to, and unfortunately, wealth. yes. And I would, I, I, unfortunately, we're going to have to, a wind up there, but I would I, I'd only add quickly that you can't build support for such an idea unless you can explain what the effect will be, the positive effect will be, and you can't do that without information. So uh, I, I hope you agree with that statement, and yes. and uh, I encourage people to read your book. That we've been speaking with the economist Gabriel Zuckman about his book, new his new book, The Hidden Wealth of Nations: The Scourge of Tax Havens. Professor Zuckman, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.